So it's a question I get whenever I explain what I've been doing for the last decade. Um, as the title suggests, I have been living abroad now for 10 years. I moved, okay, almost 10 years. I moved abroad uh, for the first time in 2010. I moved to New Zealand. Uh, after New Zealand, I went to Australia. From Australia, I went to South Korea. I briefly lived in the UK, in England, and I'm currently living in Mexico. So <laughs> the question I get a lot besides why um, is how. It's a question I think doesn't get addressed enough. I often see me talk to people 25 and under who think that they can literally just move to another country and that it's very easy. Uh, but the reality is moving to another country is not simple. <laughs> there are visas, there are finding a job, um, apartments, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but the number one way to live in a country is to get a work visa. Um, so luckily for American passport holders, you can get a working holiday visa, which is basically like a one year visa <laughs> in New Zealand and Australia. Uh, I think those are your only options. You may be able to get a short six month visa in Singapore. And I believe you can also get a six month visa in Ireland, but these have to be either while you're studying at university or directly after you graduate. Um, the same kind of goes for these working holiday visas. You can't be older than 31 when you apply. And then obviously the visa is only valid for one year. So you can't be doing this visa if you're 35. Um, yeah, those are super simple. I wrote a whole blog post about working, uh, working holiday visas. I'll link that below. It walks you through everything. If you're from the UK, if you're from Canada, you're even luckier. You have opportunities in each other's countries, in the UK and Canada. You have options in New Zealand and Australia. You have options in Hong Kong, in Japan, in Korea. If you're from New Zealand or Australia, same thing. Like, uh, you have options in a lot of European countries. Of course, if you live in Europe in, and your country is in the EU, you can live in other EU countries, uh, which I think is pretty awesome. I have worked really hard to try to get a Spanish passport uh, because I thought my <laughs> great grandma was born there. Uh, but it turns out she lied to us. <laughs> but that's beside the point. If you can get a passport from another country, you can live in that country. And often that opens doors to other countries. If you get a passport for New Zealand, you can get a passport, uh, you can live in Australia. If you have a passport for Australia, you can live in New Zealand. So those were the visas that got me um, in New Zealand for one year, Australia for one year. Americans cannot do um, farm work to get extended time. Uh, people like from the UK, from uh, Ireland, from Canada can, I think you spend three months working in like a certain postcode or doing agricultural work then you can have a second year on your working holiday visa. But Americans cannot. However, I did want to stay in Australia for longer, so I uh, took a university level course. It was from a very, very small college. Um, it was a course about coding and, and HTML and, and that sort of stuff. It was a one year course. Um, it cost uh, $3,000 at the time. This was back in 2012 and um, it gave me another year visa. However, I was only allowed then to work for 20 hours a week, which was limiting. <laughs> uh, however, it, was, it wasn't too hard to find a, a part-time job. And thankfully, Luke could still work full-time, so we were able to financially sort out still living in Sydney for a second year. <laughs> After I left Australia, I was out of working holiday visas. There were no options for me to to live anywhere else easily in my 20s. So the next thing that I decided to do was to get a TEFL and to teach English in another country. Uh, I looked at trying to go to Japan. Uh, I looked at China very briefly. I decided on South Korea. It was very easy to get a teaching job there. At the time, that was in 2014. Um, the requirements were then and still are that you come from an English-speaking country, you have a university degree, 
that you got in an English speaking country and um, you, I think that's it. Yes, you have to have a college degree. It has to be from an English university in a country where English is the first language. Some countries are, it's harder to get if say you're from South Africa or um, some parts of Ireland. The, the, at least in my experience, if you wanted to live around Seoul, uh, they really preferred American Canadian accents um, and there was the possibility uh, of getting a job if you had a very clear British accent. Uh, so yeah, again, it's still possible if you're from Australia or New Zealand as well. That's what I did. <laughs> uh, the TEFL was very easy. It's very cheap. A lot of people think that they need to take an in-person course, but you don't. Um, it was an online course that I took. Some schools don't even require that you have a TEFL, uh, but it did help with uh, figuring things out a little bit better. Obviously, I had never taught before, uh, never mind taught English, and it was quite an experience. Being able to live in a country like South Korea was really a gift. <laughs> it was so different. It was unlike any experience that I have ever had. Um, I was uncomfortable a lot of the time. I struggled, obviously, with the language. I tried to learn it before moving to Korea. I learned how to read it. Uh, I can still read it now. And then when I lived in Korea, I studied every single day, Monday through Friday, before work, for an hour. So I had textbooks, I watched um, YouTube videos, and yeah, it took a year to really, at the end of that year, feel like I was somewhat conversational. That's all lost in my mind now, <laughs> however, um, it really pushed me to think about what I want with my life, to be in uncomfortable situations and start to feel comfortable. Um, it was a very difficult job for me. I didn't love being a teacher, especially in an after school program, um, but I've written about it at nauseam on my blog. I'll link below to information about what my experience was like teaching English in South Korea. Um, but yeah, for another video, if you want me to talk about what it was like teaching in Korea, let me know in the comments and I'll make a totally separate video about my experience um, and finding jobs and all that sort of stuff. After Korea, I was able to save tons of money. Um, I, I saved over $15,000 while teaching in Korea. So I spent five months traveling around Japan, the Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. And then I went back to the US and spent some time with my family. Um, I went to the UK where my boyfriend Luke is from and we spent some time with his family. And he decided that he was gonna take another course while we were back in order to make sure that he could get back into the business that he really wants to be in. So I stayed in the UK for six months. As an American, I'm allowed to stay in the UK for six out of 12 months so I ended up using the six months pretty much straight in a row. You can pick and choose. Obviously, you can spend two months in the UK, two months in France, and then come back and do two months and leave. But you cannot stay for more than six months in 12. So yeah, so I lived in the UK for, for six months and I, I love it there. It's a, it's a place that I've been many times, thankfully, because Luke's family lived there. Um, it's a place I feel at home. It was a nice warm welcome after living in Korea. Um, but we were ready to move on as soon as Luke finished his course. And we had literally zero idea where we were gonna go next. My only requirement that I said to Luke was, I really don't wanna live somewhere that has like a harsh winter. I wanna live somewhere warm. And that was it. I was fully ready to start my freelance career and my blog. Um, and, and work really hard on that. So it, it would have been great to move somewhere where we didn't have to worry too much about money. Perhaps that was a little bit more affordable. Uh, and when this job popped up for Luke in Mexico City, we couldn't believe it. It was never ever anywhere that I would have thought that I was gonna live. Not because I didn't like it. I've never been to Mexico before I moved here. Um, it was just not on my radar. So we were really excited. I did loads of research about Mexico City. In 2016, nobody was writing about it, which is crazy to think now, but it was really hard to find information. So we moved to Mexico City pretty blind. Luke got a job here and was able to get a visa because of that job. I came here on a tourist visa. 
it's basically a tourist waiver. It's not a visa. For most um, countries, if you live in the US, Canada, the UK, Ireland, pretty much any EU country, um, Scandinavian countries, Australia, New Zealand, uh, yeah, any of those countries, or if you're from another country, but you have um, a US visa, then you can come to Mexico for six months. So when you arrive, you get a little slip that you keep in your passport because you have to give it back when you leave. And yeah, I, I spent six months here. I needed to save up enough money so that I could prove that I could afford to stay here. Um, and then I could apply for, for a non-working, I don't know why I did this. It's a non-working temporary residency visa. And basically anybody can get it if you either show that you have a job already that's paying you more than $1,600 a month, or um, that you have over 20, I think recently it's $27,000 in an account over 12 months. So over the course of 12 months. So a 401k, a savings account, um, that sort of stuff. If you can prove either of those things, you can apply for temporary residency. Uh, yeah. So here we are three and a half years into living in Mexico City. I never would have thought we'd have been here this long. Um, I love living here. I love this city. It's been an amazing opportunity career-wise for both Luke and for myself. Um, so yeah, we've been, we've been loving it. Uh, obviously, I, I talk about this city almost all the time. It just accidentally becomes something of a, a Mexico um, YouTube channel, although it's really about travels and expat life and living abroad and me. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all about what I've talked about and you can't find it on my blog that I've linked below, feel free to send me an email or leave a comment and let me know what questions you have. I'd be more than happy to make more videos like this in the future. So thanks as always for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.